Hey guys, Elvin here. I'm going to be doing a reaction to Batman Beyond vs. Spider-Man 2099. DC vs. Marvel Death Battle. Recommended by Cody Lane. You know, I still can't tell the difference between DC and Marvel. I still think they're all the same. <laughs> just proves how much of a nerd I'm not. <laughs> I'm just too much of a World Warcraft fan. And I gotta, I gotta tell you, their his World of Warcraft's history is freaking dark as hell. Wow, you think DC <laughs> or Marvel, or whatever, is dark? Yeah, try learning World of Warcraft's history. Check up, uh, what's his name? Uh, Neville, I believe that's his name. He basically talks about the entire lore of World of Warcraft. It's like really impressive. But, yep, I gotta get it brighter in here. I'm tired of my face being so dark. Shaded. Um, yeah, I'm 20 minutes. Well, I guess it is sad that uh, people like long videos, so. Just means it's gonna take me a few hours to make a. I show a lot of respect for people who make very long videos. Even like for cartoon videos, apparently those take even longer and I understand. I tried doing that and it takes a long ass time. <laughs> so if someone make like these type of videos, I guarantee you it took them several days. Unless they got the best team ever and they had literally nothing to do all day long. <laughs> so anyway, let's get to this video. Hit three, hit two, and one. The future. Everyone wants to see it, and why not? It has <laughs> robots, flying cars, and of course, superheroes. All right, superheroes, it's time to lay out our plan of action. As you can see, I have divided the franchise plan into three phases. Phase one begins with the Coon Netflix series and goes through the Coon and Friends United movie where we introduce Toolshed and the Human Kite. Yeah, the Good for you. It still has those, but they're even cooler because of all the sweet gadgets. Like Terry McGinnis, the Batman Beyond. <laughs> And Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man Never from seen that Spider-Man. A little bit of the and Batman, but... To analyze yeah. their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win I didn't watch a lot of cartoons battle. throughout my teen years. Mainly just Pokemon. Terry McGinnis was your average family guy and stuff. High school student. He went to future raves, complained about future problems, had a future. I've never been to a rave. You know, the usual. Well, almost, Until but... one fateful day when Terry got into a fight with a he group was at, of uh, jokers. What you got against hey, the free Northwest. No, no, a gang called the Jokers. Y you know, like, the Joker? Ah, but with a Z, because it's the future. Well, naturally. After possibly the most dangerous motorcycle chase ever put on television. Nah, it's cool, he's got a helmet. Terry <laughs> found himself inside an isolated mansion owned by an elderly billionaire named Bruce Wayne. Here, he Gee, I wonder who that is. the most <laughs> important revelation in his life. Bruce Wayne is Batman! Oh, what a surprise! Well, more like he was Batman. He'd retired from crime fighting years ago, because, you know, age is a bitch. Wait a minute. And After probably something else. Of Silly punks, Batman owns the night. Now taste fear, you... Wait, wait, what? Oh, God! Oh, my back just snapped like a pack of uncooked spaghetti! Oh, you just woke up and break my back without saying a word! Oh, boo! Boo on you, sir! Do 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 that's Spain! Secrecy, a punk teenager just happens to stumble into the bat cave? Yeah. For crying out loud, if he'd found my secret lair, he'd have been vaporized on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Terry's roller coaster of a day still wasn't over. Turns out his dad got murdered. Well, shit. Dad! Bummer. So he did what any emotionally charged teen who wants to avenge their dad would do. He stole the bat suit. But not the old cape and cowl of yesteryear. This was the latest I'm surprised he didn't bla Terry McInnes didn't uh, just wipe his memory or anything Batman. about knowing the he Bat Cave. Batman Beyond. You ever wonder what would happen if Batman got a hold of an Iron Man suit? <laughs> it's basically that, and damn, he looks freaking red. The Bat suit's nano. Now I'm pretty sure everyone wants to do him versus uh, Iron Man. Iron Man. Ballistic and environmental protection. 
And he can fly! Oh, they he already did something faster similar to that. A speeding future car, and he's really nimble in the air. Plus, he can always give his punches and kicks a literal rocket boost. The suit sports over two dozen other gadgets for combat and espionage. He has a wrist-mounted grappling hook that can extend over 50 feet. There's hmm. a cloaking device, a lock decoder, finger microphones, climbing claws, an underwater breather, thermal and binocular vision, OP extendable much? spikes on his <laughs> arms, flashbang grenades, triple-weighted bolas, a buzzsaw, and even retractable tweezers. Splinters are no laughing matter. <laughs> and don't forget all those sweet, sweet batarangs. These new age ninja stars are even sharper and more compact than before. And they come in a variety of delightful flavors, like explosive, ensnaring, and electrifying. Terry's got a solid throwing arm and can even disarm multiple opponents with a single shot. But if he's feeling oh, wow. a bit lazy, he can always just use his arm launchers to fire <laughs> batarang discs. Also, when anyone gets in too close, the whole suit can act like a man-sized taser. The electric oh, wow. shock is strong enough to stun people spliced with animal DNA and short out heavy machinery. But the tools don't make the man, er, Batman. Terry's a master martial artist with plenty of training from legends like former Robin Dick Grayson, totally real ninja Kairi Tanaga, and the former Dark Knight himself. <laughs> so once he got over the kid stealing his suit, of course. Bruce Wayne doesn't just serve as Terry's mentor, he's also a constant source of advice and information on the go through his direct link to the bat suit from the bat cave. Good thing, uh, dude, okay. since Terry's not exactly the world's greatest detective. At least yeah, it's been a long time since I saw that Bruce show. Bruce is extremely intelligent and an expert analyst. Plus, the Bat Cape has some very impressive technology. Not only does it host one of the most powerful supercomputers on the planet, it's also completely dependent on its own hydroelectric power supply and isolated network. Well, ooh la la, Private Hippie. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we just plant a garden then? Grow some organic sun-dried tomatoes and open a farmer's market. Then on the first Saturday of the month, when the UNSC ships show up to buy some fresh, sustainable produce, we just hop on board and ride back on the power of love. Still, okay. I don't care who Bruce used to be, having an old guy barking orders in your ear sounds annoying. Like your dad's always looking over your shoulder. <laughs> at least I imagine, because I didn't have one. Well, Terry uh -huh. is Bruce Wayne's secret son. Well, that's fine, but I don't see how that affects... What? <laughs> what? In an effort to ensure there would always be a Batman, government boogeywoman Amanda Waller had secretly overwritten Warren McGinnis's reproductive DNA with that of Bruce Wayne's. So like, he was just blasting Wayne babies? It's like all the fun, but you could get out of any child support case. And bonus, I guess Terry's father technically wasn't murdered. Good for him. Also, he's uh, got all the benefits uh, from Bruce's okay. kick-ass genes. Even before going through combat training, Terry was a skilled fighter strong enough to send opponents flying with a single punch. In the suit, he's strong enough to lift large I-beams and this giant boulder. Damn. He's even survived getting his leg trapped under Bruce Wayne's trophy penny. What's so special about Ow. a penny? Just look at it. Holy colossal currency, Batman! The penny's <laughs> diameter is <laughs> Mr. Krabs would love that. <laughs> and is frequently dated from the 1940s. This means the penny is likely composed of bronze and weighs around 166 tons. That's okay. more than enough to crush all the bones in your foot. But not Terry. He was up and at him like nothing happened. I mean, Ow. this guy's tough enough to take a missile to the face and then fall hundreds of stories. And all he got out of it was a couple broken ribs. What's a penny as heavy as 33 monster trucks gonna do? He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, skilled enough to defeat lizard people and the Justice Lords. In a newer okay. suit, he could fire concussive pulse blasts and even outraced an intercontinental missile which can reach speeds of up to 15,000 miles per hour. I would say he's so okay, times but the speed of sound. this is Marvel no and DC Wayne, stuff, he's so... Kind of a punk and don't yeah. have the amazing smarts or expertise of Batman classic. You don't quite have his magnificent brain, for instance. Yeah. You do have his heart, though. Maybe not, but he has accomplished feats equal to his predecessor, like fighting Superman and ending the Joker threat once and for all. Clearly, Terry McGinnis has more hey, than earned the title of He Batman. finally did something the other Batman couldn't do. Kill the Joker. <laughs> For some clown who thinks he's Batman. I am Batman. Then they went through. Batman. <laughs> so, here.
Here's an unfortunate spoiler. The year 2099 kind of sucks. Plagued by a massive civil war between humans and mutants, the world fell into a dystopian ruin of violence and anarchy. Well, that the sucks. heroic age had come to an end. Is that a freaking orc? <laughs> some people still wanted a sequel. Enter Miguel O'Hara, a child prodigy turned super genius with a penchant for genetic tinkering. Miguel's skills landed him a job at one of the biggest companies in the world, Alchemax, where he got to work trying to rebuild one of the greatest heroes of all time. Spider-Man. Spider-Man! Spider-Man! Here comes Peter on the clothesline, but his name's not Peter, really. Spider-Man! Spider-Man! Specifically, hey. he attempted to replicate the DNA of Peter Parker, the original Spider-Man. But like most of the 21st century superheroes, not much remained of Parker outside of stories and legend. Miguel had to build huh. his experiment from scratch, starting with a single, simple spider. <gasps> Oh, spiders! Spiders! Get them off me! Get them off me! Get them off me! Wake up! No! Wake up! Oh, it's me! Oh, it's me! Oh, it's me! Unfortunately, Alchemax didn't have the greatest job security. After a lot of bad blood and some spilled blood, Miguel wound up accidentally getting a dose of his own creepy crawly project, transforming him into the okay. Spider-Man of 2099. But future Spider-Man like isn't that. quite the same as your grandpappy Spidey. Uh, That's right. Apart from the superhuman strength, speed, durability, uh, and improved healing, Miguel's powers are entirely different. Unlike Parker, he can't actually stick to any surface. You got he can still death? wall crawl, though, using uh, retractable talons on his fingers yeah, and toes, it. which also make for fairly deadly weapons in a fight. And he's got fangs like a vampire. <laughs> if he bites you, he can inject a venom that can paralyze your whole body almost instantly. Okay. Also, he may not have Petey's trusty spider sense, but his sense of sight, smell, and hearing are super fine. He can hear noises from miles away, see in the dark, and make out far off and fast moving objects with ease. In fact, his senses are so wow. cute, he wears tinted glasses to keep daylight from hurting his eyes. And like any Spider-Man, he can shoot webs from his hands. Miguel doesn't need compact web shooter devices on his wrists. He actually has organic spinnerets in his arms, which create and release thick, durable strings of webbing. Because hmm. they're natural, these strings are chemically identical to spider silk. With a Never played that game. Similar to steel. Ew! Okay, the original Spider-Man always kind of grossed me out, but this guy's powers are disgusting. <laughs> I think Miguel would agree with you. Well, yeah. One day he's just dragging well, he has multiple hands for multiple stuff. stuff. Like you, and the next he's got big lumps in his arms which shoot sticky stuff. Who wouldn't be weirded out? Miguel saw his newfound power as a curse. A blight which turned him into an inhuman freak of nature. But that didn't stop him okay. from fighting crime, complete with his own Spidey suit. His original costume was made from unstable molecules, allowing the use of his talons without tearing the fabric. He also huh. wears a web-like cape made of light bite, which lets him glide through the air. Whoa, light bite! Okay. I remember that. Man, did they stop Oh, that was so long ago. Did they find a way to stop you losing those little pegs? Nice <laughs> bite. Yeah, whatever. The suit looks pretty cool, so I hate to spoil the mood, but it's actually just a run-of-the-mill costume from a Day of the Dead festival. No, really. Though after meeting the present-day Peter choice. Parker, Miguel received a much-needed upgrade. His new suit contained synthesized unstable molecule fabric mixed okay, with the advertisement greatly done. improving his defense. This suit can survive a shot from a howitzer artillery cannon. A common mm. M777 military howitzer fires 92-pound shells at 2,200 feet per second. Damn. That hits with over 100 tons of force. Miguel's even taken a hit from the thing, a hit which shattered a tempered glass window and sent Miguel flying over two dozen feet. Son of a bitch! And the new suit has explosives, hologram projectors, infrared scanning, and it's even got wings and rocket boosters on the feet. Wait, that sounds familiar. Miguel may be a genius, <laughs> but he's at his best when he's working with his holographic assistant, Lila, or the Lyrate lifeform approximation. She's basically like the future Alexa with a bunch of extra features. She keeps track of Miguel's life signs People say Alexa's not that great. With Lila's scanners and his super senses, anyone would have a hard time trying to sneak up on future Spidey. While Lila was originally built as a home appliance, she can be stored on Miguel's portable communicator. She can act as an onboard lie detector and do advanced calculations to the 20th decimal in a millisecond. Which is oh, wow. amazing. Fun fact, Lila's appearance was based on Marilyn Monroe. Arrgh. 
No, that sounds familiar. Ninety-nine seems to know who Marilyn Monroe was. Yeah. Okay, seriously, how did they lose so much information in less than a hundred years? Remember, kids, always back up your files. It'll prevent the apocalypse. Well, lucky for them, Miguel got over his emo phase and started setting the future back on track. And he had the skills to do it. He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, tough enough to take a shotgun blast to the chest, Damn. resilient enough to tank electric shocks, and strong enough to rip a 20-ton turret off a tank. I'll put my bids on him. <laughs> he helped another Spider-Man keep this giant building piece in place. What even is that? Likely some sort of antenna, but it also resembles the mooring mast atop the Empire State Building. Back when yeah. everybody thought Zeppelins were the hot new thing, because who doesn't like riding a giant If I remember right, that did, yeah, that happened. <laughs> Sign me up! Assuming it's composed of steel, and roughly estimating its size compared to the Spider-Man on the roof, then comparing the Empire State Building's mooring mast, this should weigh, at most, 200 tons. So basically, McGill's a badass. <laughs> he proved it in the most epic way possible. After rebuilding the world with Captain America, Miguel inherited the most legendary weapon of them all, Mjolnir. Although oh, wow. didn't actually grant him its warrior powers. Miguel didn't How is he able weapon, to lift it? But as proof of his authority, a literal symbol of the societal weight he alone could carry. With his dominance hmm. asserted, Miguel created the utopian future a person could only dream of. <laughs> Well, this sucks. Let's go home. And you thought Peter Parker was cool. This Spider-Man is at the top. <laughs> Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man of the year 2099. That's me. Ready huh? to save the universe and looking good while doing it. <laughs> all right, the combatants are set. Let's yeah, I go, I'll put my bits on but, uh, Spider. But first, the future is now in the form of Blue Apron. Nope. Grandpappy Boomstick always said that nothing in life is better than good. Ah! Alrighty then. Yeah, this is definitely an old an one. Out. I've been seeing some odd reports regarding this part of the city. <laughs> <laughs> I was brooding there. Who the shock are you? <laughs> Fuck! Ooh! You're in a sticky situation. <laughs> right back at you, fatty. <laughs> Did he say fatty or batty? Hey, Lila. Get me a reading on this vampire guy, yeah? Of course, Miguel. I can't identify his tech or fighting style. But I can try hacking his suit. <laughs> yeah, that would suck for him. <laughs> He's too comfortable in the air. Try a different approach. Get to ground level. I can't move! Ooh! Ooh, damn. Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> Something's trying to hack your suit. Our new friend, no doubt. Yeah. How's the hack going? Oh, he looks old. looks Going different. Fast. Get in close and finish this quick. No problem. Can my fangs pierce his suit? I think so. Then I'll finish this myself. All right, who's gonna finish it? Ooh. Problem solved. I guess that's one way to do it. KO! Oh, I'll never get right, tired I thought suit was invincible. Blow up. It's always such a blast! Thanks to Bruce's counsel, Terry used his flashbang to take advantage of Miguel's sensitive eyesight, and his electric shock that can short out large machinery to deal with Lila. Yeah, unlike hey. Bruce, the poor girl wasn't really built for combat. And while her hacking skills were top notch, the isolated Batcave had the defenses to hold her off. Even still, Terry's stats edged out Miguel's in more ways than one. When it came to maneuverability and durability, they were mostly even. Both could dodge bullets and weave through the air. Both could survive heavy ballistic hits. 
But unlike Terry, Miguel's never outraced anything faster than a Mach 19 ballistic missile. For physical strength, Terry had him beat too. Recall that boulder that he lifted underwater. This took place in Superman's Fortress of Solitude near the Arctic. What would that have so to do with that? the boulder was likely composed of sedimentary dark limestone, the most common rock type around that location. So we compared Terry's height to the boulder, applied the density for limestone, and subtracted the weight reduced by underwater buoyancy. So which the part of this do you think I understand? 192 tons. And he tossed it aside like it was nothing. Terry's peak strength in the bat suit has to be more Me than 200 tons. Me brain don't work tons. that good. <laughs> Assuming Miguel applied his fair share when holding up that antenna, his best strength feat we know of is at max 100 tons. But he's okay. a Spider-Man. Spider-Man can lift more than that, right? Not usually. Technically, Miguel's powers are so different from Peter's that we shouldn't really scale him to other Spider-Men. But for the benefit of the doubt, hmm. let's do it anyway. We'll check out two of Spider-Man's most impressive strength feats. Really? The first is the time he braced a private jet while it was landing. Look at him. He's literally the landing gear. According <laughs> to Spider-Man himself, the plane's total weight was at most 115,000 pounds. Okay. Adding the thrust from a Whittle W1 engine, which I don't know pounds. is most likely to have an engine comparable to, this feat comes out to 58 tons. Not even close to All I know is I'm over 200. 200. Then there was this one that time helps. where Spidey had to push <laughs> way past his limits to lift what he offhandedly compared to as a locomotive. Since he could measure the plane, it's likely he's accurate here. But given the time period, that's still only 130 tons at most. Is that it's water on him or oil? A pretty sizable physical advantage. And just because Terry's mind wasn't as fine-tuned as the original Batman's didn't mean he's dumb. Even more, Miguel never trained like Terry did. Hell, he never really, really had much formal training at all, but Terry yeah, was trained really? by ninjas, stealth artists, and other crime fighters to be a master in the battlefield. And since Miguel didn't have a spider sense, Terry just had to wait until the untrained future Spidey left an opening. In short, while Miguel wasn't completely outmatched, Terry's superior strength, counseling, equipment, and training won the bout. Turns out this Batman was beyond him. The winner is <laughs> Batman Beyond. Stick around, we're about to announce the combatants for the next death battle. Yeah, that, if you want to watch I exclusive commentary on that. this episode, click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. Should try to grab one of these shirts too. Nah. Yeah, I reacted to those two. And pause. That did pause. Okay, pause. Alright, that was my reaction to Batman Beyond vs. Spider-Man 2099. Uh, yeah, it was... Yeah, it was a little shocker for me. I thought Spidey would do it, but like I said, I didn't really watch a lot of their episodes, so I didn't know much about them. But... Um, yeah, it was still pretty good. I'm not really sure what else to say, dang. But, uh, hope you guys like the reaction and have a nice day.